Now, since uh, last two three classes, we have been discussing about the 2D cosy. That is the most important experiment for any chemist. If you have to uh, make the assignment of all your molecules, if you synthesize the molecule, characterize it, take the 1D NMR spectrum. If the molecule is complex and slightly bigger, there will be lot of peaks. And how do you make the assignment of an ambiguous assignment? If you have to make cosy is the best way. And we took several examples with how a cosy works, what it does for a coupled spin, uncoupled spins, everything we discussed. And I said always one dimensional spectrum of a cosy appears on the diagonal. Take the spectrum of cosy spectrum of any molecule, sit on the diagonal, come vertically down, go horizontally and complete a square. Then this diagonal peak and this diagonal peaks are coupled partners. Be wherever the, you get the cross peaks, those diagonal peaks are the protons which have ident different chemical shifts, they give rise to cross peak. Like that from that diagonal you can find out the other cross peak if it is there. So, you can continue like that step by step manner and make the assignment for all the peaks in the given molecule. So, of course, is the simplest experiment to identify the immediate coupled partners. So, with uh, that we will take another one or two simple example then go to a complex molecule and today we will also see some examples of little different types of uh, Cauchy experiment if there is time. So, I will take another one or two example where complexity is there, how do you make an assignment. Now that you have become very confident already, I can go a little faster here to make the assignment of this one. Okay, we will start the another molecule here. This is Cauchy spectrum of 6 S L benzoate. This is the structure of this molecule. And confidently I would always say this is C A 3, start with C A 3, proton 11. And then come down, you complete this, this has to be proton 10. And proton 10 gives rise to a cross peak here. So, this has to be proton 9. And here proton 9 has a cross peak, you know, th there is a multiplicity pattern here, you can see two groups here. That proton 9 is also giving cross peaks, it can give to these, these, etcetera. So, that could be for a proton 8. From proton 8, you have a cross peak to two things one for S, one for 10, proton 8 to 10 also is there. And also, it is giving rise to cross peak to 7. It can give rise to cross peak to 7. See from proton 8, go here, complete the square, and this is uh, 7. And of course, there is another diagonal here. What is the diagonal? If you can, if you carefully see, I you don't uh, get confused. We will see with uh, start with 10, 11, you will get 10, 10 to 9, 9 to 8, 8 to 7. You complete the square. And 7 we can complete this square. From 7 diagonal come down, you hit diagonal and complete this square. So, this has to be proton 6. So, that completely analyzes this bunch. We can make the safe assignment without any difficulty. But what is left over? Left over is only phenyl part. In the phenyl group, of course, 1, 2, and 3, I can simply make the assignment based on the intensity pattern. This and this proton are equivalent these two are equivalent gives double the intensity and this is a single proton para proton half the intensity. So, very easily you can identify this I did not mark it there that is fine. But you go to this another molecule like this very simple 500 mega Cauchy spectrum of a molecule like this. Here we have two two protons you have to assign which is the proton in which you are confident. Obviously, I look at the proton 2 here this can couple to only one of the protons and become a doublet immediate coupled partner. I would say this is proton 2 and then go here horizontally you will see proton 3. See here proton 3. From proton 3 I come here go vertically up and then I will complete this square. This is 2 and 3. Complete this square this is 3 and 4. From 4 I can come here of course, there is a bunch here 4 and 5 cross peaks are there, but they are unresolved. From 5 I come here complete this I complete this square. 5 is complete to, coupled to 6, but 6 has 2 protons, 5 is also coupled to 6 prime, there are 2 protons here, both are 2 bond coupling or 3 bond coupling with proton, this for H5. So, we will have 2 cross peaks here, this and this. So, if this is 6, other is 6 prime. So, you can continue completely as make the assignment, very simple. Which is 6 and which is 6 prime, you have to use the knowledge of uh, uh, coupling constants, all right. So, in the, if there is a dimer like this for a molecule like this, there are two dimers, it is two a dimer of two molecules here and here. How do I assign? 
see there are um, assignments have been very easily made look at this molecule go vertically up they are all red lines and it forms one spin system systematically which all correspond to one of them and all other one for this molecule b start with one of them b come here and then of course go here go here like that you can assign for other molecule even though it's a dimer it's a bigger molecule very slight difference in the chemical groups are there in each of the cross mixes very easily you can make the assignment so you yeah, i hope by now you have already got the idea how to go ahead and make the assignment i will uh, take the assignment of a molecule like this a sugar like molecule it's a glucoside always if you want to analyze the molecules of sugars please remember most of the time it's an anomeric proton comes down field it is always between 4 to 5 or 6 ppm so you look at the anomeric proton and that is the only proton which can ex coupled with another proton which gives us a doublet what is that proton here if you look at it in this molecule this is a doublet coming in the region of around 4.4 safely i would say that is anomeric proton proton h1 you have to use the like chemistry logic now i use that as a h1 anomeric proton and using that anomeric proton i'll complete the square that must be proton h2 obviously this is proton h2 h1 is coupled to h2 so very easily you can make See, please remember i am taking this example to show you that in the case of sugars and others always start with anomeric proton that makes your job simpler to analyze and then for, for, if this region is expanded here this region you will see what is going to happen the entire region up to this is expanded and you can see what is, what will happen we already know this is h2 from uh, anomeric proton we got this from h2 go here come here come here complete a square but why this central peak is missing okay this is the anti phase character as a consequence what happened is of 1 is to 2 is to 1 it is 1 is to minus 1 0 1 intensity is coming so that, that is it can happen sometimes the central peak miss uh, disappear like that okay doesn't matter from this you start complete the square so that has to be proton h3 from proton h3 you can go down go horizontal come down like this complete this square then this has to be h4 we started with h1 in the previous slide h2 h3 h4 then from h4 here you can continue like this and complete this square so this has to be h5 very easily you can make the assignment now h6 and other things are here separately we are, up to this was expanded we could get up to h5 now h5 is known from h5 what are the two possibilities you can think of h5 is coupled to two protons here h6 has two protons so come here and complete this one this one h6a another one h6b why i said h6a and h6 axial and equatorial you have to assign based on the coupling strength always remember axial axial coupling is larger axial equatorial coupling is smaller than that and equatorial equatorial coupling is even smaller than that so you have to look at the multiplicity pattern and see which is larger coupling so from that you can know whether it is axial proton or equatorial proton and then you can make the assignment so that is the usual way we have to start doing it and we'll go to the uh, 2d spectrum of a protected peptide like this and very easy in a protected molecule again start with anomeric proton complete the square keep on going like this one you see one with uh, i go here and then complete and go to two. i'm not completing the square i assume that you know by now two 2 to 3 3 to 4 4 to 5 r6 we don't know whatever it is both 5 and 6 are indistinguishable they are overlapped here fine also there is a, there is a pyrimidine base group is here with that we can take and make the assignment here with the pyrimidine base group that is also there pyrimidine base group is giving rise to cross peak this is the anomeric proton and of course this is the pyrimidine base group is there with that base group with the anomeric proton here you can make the assignment for these two protons aromatic protons so this is how we can start making this thing some complications will come at times i'll take the example of the proton analysis of phenyl groups i have de deliberately taken this molecule remember here there are four protons here there are three protons but from the multiplicity pattern i can tell you this has to be a doublet of doublet one meta coupling and a para coupling this is an ortho coupling and a meta coupling doublet of doublet this is also similar 
all those patterns you have understood already. You have discussed quite a bit about the multiplicity pattern of the phenyl protons. Okay, we will start with this. I will say this is one spin system, this is another spin system. There are two different spin systems. These two protons are numbered, these three protons 1, 2 and 3 forms one spin system. This 5, 6, 7, 8 forms another spin system. Now, analysis of this one is very easy from the COSI. Start with this H1. Why I will say the H1? This is the only proton, it can have meta coupling and a para coupling. If it is not resolved, it is a doublet or doublet of doublet, very weak the separation, very small separation is there, you can find out that has to be H1. And from H1, I will start with this and say this must be H3 because H3 can have a first ortho coupling large and then each line is going to be a doublet of a doublet because of this that is H3 and H3 is going to give rise to a coupling to other one that has to be H4, this has to be H4. That is a doublet, it not is a triplet but you know this one doublet is here, other part of the doublet from other one is overlapped here from other phenyl ring. See there is a overlap here, so you can see here this peak correspond to this doublet and this peak correspond to this doublet. You can make the assignment very precisely here. Okay. We will start with this one. I would say this is proton 8 or 5 does not matter. There is a confusion. I will start with proton 5. Proton 5 will couple to this one and become proton 3, proton 6 and proton 6 has to be 2 triplets, triplets okay, because this is doublet of doublet and ortho couplings are nearly equal, it appears like a triplet and then further split because of the meta coupling, it is triplet of doublets here. Same way for this proton, from 6 you will get to 7 and from 7 you go to 8. In this type of phenyl groups, very easy to assign using the cosy, that is why I took this example. But there is one ambiguity here, whether this proton is H5 or H8 because both of them will give doublets. See both of them will have identical pattern, this is doublet, doublet of doublet of doublet, both of them will give eight train pattern. If unresolved large coupling is there, a doublet and doublet of doublet. So, which is which, whether this is proton 5 or this is proton 8, I do not know. For that, there is an ambiguity of the assignment of spin system, whether this is the pattern we have to assign or this is the pattern we have to assign, we do not know. For that, what we do is, we resort to an experiment called NOE separate NOE experiment which how we can assign by separately irradiating one of them. So, when I do the NOE, I will take the example of this and I am going to discuss at that time. So, there is a, no point in going for that now because that will be a separate this thing we have to discuss by doing NOE. But uh, instead of that what I am going to do is I will uh, start analyzing the 2D Cauchy spectrum of a glucose. This is where another important thing. See that molecule, I will come back when I do the uh, no C because I have not discussed no T, no C yet. When I discuss no C, there are two ways of doing no C steady state NOE and transient NOE. And steady state is a simple one dimensional difference NOE. That is why I did not explain this to you because when I explain NOE, you know that. I will come back and do that. In the meantime, we will go to the 2D Cauchy spectrum of D glucose. See, glucose exists in two forms conventional glucose, what we take. It has got alpha and beta form, 64 percent beta and 36 percent is alpha. That is the mixture, it exists in two forms. And this is the alpha important thing. Before you go to the analysis of the spectrum, you should know what is the coupling. As I told you, axial axial couplings in sugars are larger than axial equatorial. Then equatorial equatorial is much smaller. So, always this is larger, this is small, next to that, then this is smaller than both. This information is needed. And of course, geminal coupling like this is quite large. Why I say this is needed? When we have ambiguity in the assignment of let us say groups like 6 and 6 prime like this or 5 and 5 prime, which is the one which you have to consider? You, then both give rise to cross speed, but we use knowledge of coupling also at that time. So, this is the 1D spectrum of alpha and beta D glucose together. Look at this is always two anomeric protons comes to the downfield. I told you this is anomeric proton of beta and alpha D glucose also structure I have not written, this is anomeric proton is coming. And this is the carbon 13 spectrum, let us, we will analyze the carbon 13 spectrum, 
there is no, to, no need to do now because carbon 13 we discussed. One important thing is this type of sugar molecules everything is recorded in water which peak, which comes at 4.786 ppm. What happens is we record the spectrum in D2. D2 exchanges all OHS present in the molecule. They all come around so water, near water peak or get exchanged with water. You will, you will not see OHS peaks. So, only we will have to worry about anomeric proton and other protons. Generally, OHS are exchanged in D2 if you record in D2. So, but two anomeric peaks are important. As I told, it always computes in 4.5 to 5.5 or less than 6 ppm. And look at the peak's intensity. I told you 64, 36 is the percentage of mixture present in water. But when you take the measure the intensity of the peaks in the NMR spectrum, almost same ratio we got. 64 intensity. Look at the anomeric proton spectrum here. This is the one, and this if you take the ratio, this is larger than this one. This is 60 per 6, this is 34. So, clearly, I would clearly say this in because of the intensity, this corresponds to beta glucose. So, anomeric proton, you look from the anomeric proton peak, start making the assignment. So, anomeric proton, if you know, we can just base based on the J values itself, we can assign. Why? Because remember the in the case of the alpha glucose, the doublet is axial equatorial coupling. Axial equatorial coupling is small, whereas in beta glucose it is axial axial coupling that is quite large. I will show you in the structure here. See look at look at in NMR spectrum, look at the separation quite large. So, obviously, that as I told you has to be beta glucose using the coupling strength of anomeric protons splitting pattern which is coupling of large value compared to alpha I can make the assignment. So, I will start with this this is, this is beta this is alpha these are anomeric protons further we can start with the cosy pattern. How do we assign the cosy spectrum of this we already start with you know that start with the anomeric proton. See anomeric proton one which has a small coupling is alpha. I will complete this. So, if this is alpha, this is 2, this is, if this is anomeric proton 1, this has to be 2. Now, the structure of both of them is given. If you consider this anomeric proton, this has a axial axial coupling, whereas this one has a axial equatorial coupling. So, that is a problem. That is why this coupling is much smaller, whereas beta has larger coupling. I can make this assignment alpha if I know 1, I know 2 very easily. I can make the assignment. Similarly, for beta anomeric proton, I complete this square. I know then this is beta, this is 1 of beta, this is 2 of beta. So, 2 2 protons alpha anomeric proton 1 and proton 2 from alpha. Similarly, anomeric proton 1 and 2 of beta, we can make the assignment. I use the knowledge of chemical shift anomeric proton and the coupling separation. That is why I said you should remember axial axial coupling is larger than axial equatorial. This is the important concept you have to use while making the assignment of all these things. So, now with the, we know what is alpha 2 complete with 2 go here complete 3 and go down go completely and this is 4 and then complete this square this becomes 5 and from this you have 6 and then 6 alpha and beta. Here the problem comes 6 alpha and beta if you go for the structure why it is 6 alpha and beta which is alpha and which is beta how do I know which is alpha and which is beta this is where knowledge of coupling we have to use looking at the splitting pattern and also generally it is known that one of this you know equatorial proton it comes here axial proton comes here that is there is always some chemical shift difference of 0.3 to 0.4 ppm all right. So, similarly beta glucose we can do we start with 2 complete the square this is 3 and then this is 4, 5, 6 alpha and beta. So, all the complete assignment of alpha and beta glucose can be done. This is a complete assignment of glucose we have done. More, this is where you can see the expansion beta which is the axial axial coupling is larger and this is smaller alpha. We use that as a starting point and use the cosy to make the assignment. Okay, with this most of the assignments we have done and what I am going to do is 
I will uh, discuss something more about the different aspects of Cauchy experiments and what are its limitations. We have discussed about the Cauchy so far, but what are its limitations? Okay, we have comfortable. We are comfortable by now. So many molecules start from simple molecule, mixture of molecule like glucose and varieties of things. And I gave you idea where do you start in sugar molecules or in aromatic protons, aromatic groups are there. You have where is the comfortable point for you to start? That's what I wanted to tell you. Let us see what are the limitations of Cauchy experiment. First thing is the polarization transfer between the coupling coupled protons and depends upon the strength. If the coupling is larger, cross peak will become stronger. If the coupling strength is very, very weak coupling is there, you will not be able to get the uh, cross peak. Even if you get cross peak, it may be very weak in intensity. And all the 2D NMR peaks have a fine structure and they uh, contribute to diagonal and cross peak. There, there will be coupling will be there. So each peak, as I told you in the two, two spin, each diagonal peak will be 4, 4 with square pattern. Each cross peak will be 4, 4 with square pattern. But in all these bigger molecules, the resolution is not there, we did not see. But in principle, there are fine structures. And if cross peak contains both positive and negative signal, whereas uh, diagonal peak contains only the positive signal. That is what we also discussed. I discussed about the pattern of the diagonal peak and cross peak. But when there are signals are broad, unresolved, because of negative and positive signal close by, they cancel out. As a consequence, there is a drawback. Sometimes you may not see the cross peak at all in Cosi. When you do not see cross peak, it may be because there are two anti uh, you know, uh, pattern peaks, anti phase peaks are there close by, so that th that will get cancelled out and you will not see. And diagonals are in phase because it is a huge peak, it will mask the peaks close to it, or the some of the cross peak very close to it. There are, and sometimes diagonal peaks very large, they give rise to tiles. Okay. So, Another thing, whenever you record a spectrum, what is the light shape you are going to get? Of course, 1D spectrum has to be like this, very clear. Uh, we, have, we have to give the do the line shape analysis to get a sharp peak. We usually take CSCL3 and measure the peak of height of the satellite and then it is at 1.1 percent and half of the satellite height we, and then we measure the height of this. Very easily we can measure and get the line shape. Line shape analysis is done. This I have discussed extensively in one of the courses. Since I am not uh, discussing this, uh, this course focus is different, so I am not telling that. But there are three different types of uh, crop pattern you are going to get peak shapes in the COSI or any 2D NMR. One is pure absorption line shape like this. It is like a star picture. Other one pure dispersion like this. And this is phase distal line shape. These are the three different types of spectrum depending upon the type of experiment you do. That is whether you are doing the magnitude type experiment or phase sensitive experiment or whether you are processing to get the double absorption line shape that is what matters. So, always the pro, pro, uh, pro spectra are represented in two ways, 2D spectra are represented two ways. One is phase sensitive mode, other is magnitude mode. Magnitude mode means there is no phase information that is last, no phase information, everything is discordant. Phase sensitive is always important, okay. So, and magnitude most not good for resolution, high resolution because you cannot distinguish between dispersive and absorptive peak, they are mixed up. Phase sensitive, on the other hand, is very good. You have line shapes of absorption and dispersion, both are separated out, and generally, absorption mode is preferred for high resolution, that is what we do. Look at the Cauchy spectrum, cross peaks if you do the magnitude mode Cauchy, you get a star like pattern like this. Usually, you should get sharp peaks with a double absorption means very sharp peak, but we get star like pattern. This is because of mixture of absorption and dispersion like this. This is the magnitude Cauchy, record in the magnitude mode, not phase sensitive mode. Okay. In both F1 and F2 dimension, sometimes we have, of course, one important thing. Fourier transformation when you do you have real component and imaginary component each, each dimension. In both dimension if you do you have two real two imaginary there are four possible combinations then real real, imaginary real, real imaginary and imaginary imaginary there are four possible combinations. Accordingly we have four different types of line shapes for example look at this this is one dimensional imaginary other dimension real you have both the dimension imaginary imaginary. Here 
real and imaginary and both are real real and look at it this is a sharp peak look at this is very broad imaginary imaginary this is one side broad other side is sharp but this is what we have to consider always double absorption mode gives a better resolution please remember when you want to record the spectrum of cosi and others always do the phase sensitive detection with a double absorption mode the data has to be pure double absorption mode line shape this is the double absorption mode line shape lines are very sharp and you get see the contour plot this is the stack plot like this so double absorption mode is always preferred for better resolution that you should know and there are several variants of the cosi experiment cosi can be of several types one is dqf cosi the double quantum filtered cosi is something where advantage is you know lot of uh, you will remove all the peaks uh, cross peaks which are masked by the diagonal etc and it is very very easily you can get positive negative signals very easily you can resolve it and sing singlets like what uh, reference solvent peaks they all get suppressed because we take the magnetization to double quantum pathway and then bring it back for the detection this is the way we have to select the double quantum pathway similar to cosi only thing is second entity repulse generates multiple quantum coherence which is not detected by the receiver so and the double quantum is always converted to single quantum as i told you anything mag uh, selection rule anything other than delta m plus or minus 1 is not detectable there are multiple quantum we always detect single quantum nmr i told you plus or minus 1 is single quantum that's what we detect so by you do some uh, process of selection of this uh, double quantum you can pass it through that by using phase cycling and then convert into single quantum this is the way we do this uh, by applying a 180 pulse and how do you do the coherence pathway selection and we have to apply different pulses this is a more detail you don't worry about it but dqf cosi experiment with coherence pathway selection is always like this it is a simple experiment similar to cosi but little modification is there you can see here after 90 pulse t1 this is not 90 lot of modification is there and also with the gradient selection there is a phase previously i said in the coherence transfer pathway you can use the phase different phases you can do by uh, this is phase selection okay uh, uh, alternately you can use gradient phase cycling can be done or gradients so generally in the phase cycling version dqf cosi both the coherence pathways are retained in the gradient only one coherence pathway is retained there are two different coherence pathway always it can go here come back to one come back and come to here there are two coherent pathways in the phase cycled version of dqf cosi both are retained whereas in the gradient version only one is retained obviously that tells you the sensitivity of this is less compared to coherence phase cycle select way okay and the diagonal and cross peaks of both phase anti phase double absorption mode line shape and they are not affected by double quantum filtration advantage is whatever the tailing we get severe tailing at the diagonal they are all removed so it gives a better quality spectrum dq double quantum filtered cosi gives you better quality spectrum the singlets from uncoupled proton solvents reference all are suppressed you won't see it at all there is a biggest advantage of that so major advantage of dqf cosi is removal of dispersive component of the diagonal peaks as a consequence there is a, this is the spectrum which is much much better a simple typical example of a dqf cosi spectrum look at this one diagonal both uh, positive negative peaks are present here both are positive negative earlier case in the case of cosi both were in you know, a po uh, positive positive peaks in both the dimensions here they were anti phase doublets here in the in the case of cosi uh, conventional cosi is here positive negative positive negative both diagonal cross peaks are anti phase absorbing in the conventional cosi only cross peaks are anti phase diagonal are in phase but here it is diff different and they are double absorbing gives better resolution i told you uh, uh, representation of the cross peak in the cosi always double absorption mode is preferred and the typical dp dq of cosi spectrum always there are no diagonal peaks will mask the cross peaks if there are cross peaks nearby here they will not be masked whereas remember in the cosi huge peak will be there 
because both are in phase diagonal peaks and that will mask the peaks nearby. Sometimes you will not be able to identify. Here is a comparison. Look at the Cauchy spectrum of this molecule. It is a pentapeptide. Look at this molecule. Look at the Cauchy spectrum. How the trails are there? Peaks nearby. You will not be able to see. They are all masked. It is a clumsy spectrum. Very, you know, not good at all. On the other hand, look at the decay of Cauchy spectrum here. Fantastic. You know, it is a double absorptive line shape, and and both the side. You know, face. You can see antiphase character is there for all the cross peaks and diagonal peaks. Look at the resolution here. Look at the resolution here. So, both gives the same information, there is no difference at all, but look at the better quality of the spectrum. So, always I have suggestion I tell for the participants, do not ever do Cauchy spectrum, always do DKF Cauchy that gives you a better spectrum. Cauchy spectrum like this is very clumsy and you will not be able to get the good resolution. Okay. This is a simple example to show how the DKF Cauchy spectrum is is obtained on a molecule like this. See look at this molecule, this is the molecule structure and you can see one peak, another peak, two doublet, two spin systems are easily identified and this is the structure of the molecule. You can clearly see the structure of the molecule. From the structure you can make out there are one group here and one group here that is all. But look at the resolution here, diagonal and cross peak fantastic resolution you are going to get compared to cross peak. So, peaks near the diagonal is also very well resolved. This is the advantage of DKF Cosi. And the other variant of the Cosi is about Cosi 45 is there, Cosi 9 and uh, delayed Cosi is there. And uh, of course, uh, this, let me see how much is there. Uh, I think there is a little bit is there, I will finish it. So, then tomorrow I can start with a another one minute I will finish this one. Okay. Cosi 45 is the simplest experiment, instead of 90 degree here we use the 45 degree. What is the advantage of it? Intensity of the cross peak near the diagonal becomes weaker and the diagonal becomes narrow. But another thing is cross peaks appear tilted like this and the direction of the tilted, tilting gives me relative signs of the coupling. Instead of 90 degree, if you use second pulse as 45 degree, not 45 any angle, soft Cauchy we call it, we can use 20 degree, 30 degree, 50 degree, whatever the angle you want. But then what will happen is compared to this Cauchy 90, this Cauchy 45, some of the peaks are missing and some of the peaks appear tilted and the direction of tilting gives you the sign of the coupling. Usually if you look at some of the molecule, visional couplings are usually positive and geminal couplings are negative. And you, if you want to find out the relative sign of that uh, low flip angle Cauchy, where the second uh, pulse using 45 degrees is better. You can also have a long range Cauchy as also called delayed Cauchy. What we do is after, after the T1 before after the 90 pulse before T1 you apply one pulse one delay here and after another pulse you give another delay. Additional fixed delay is there given before and after the second pulse. This will enhance the resolution, but the total evolution time is constant that is always retained to get the better digital resolution. And then what will happen small couplings which are not possible to detect they also can be detected. Only thing is you have to set the delay of 50 to 500 microsecond 200 microsecond. Remember this is nothing but a two, co, two pulse Cauchy, but only thing is small delay is given after first pulse and after the second pulse that is all. And then we are going to get the long range Cauchy that means we are going to get the coupling constants which are greater than 4 to 5 bonds, which is generally weak, we, we do not see it that can be detected. So, this is a comparison of the Cosi 90 and the delayed Cosi. See how of the peaks here which are not there, you are not seeing, you are able to see it because there are small, small couplings here which are not resolved in the Cosi. This is the delayed Cosi. So, correlation with the small long range couplings of less than 1 hertz or 2 hertz can be easily detected. So, this is what I just wanted to tell you in the I am going to stop here. But remember with this I will with this I will finish the interpretation of Cosi and discussion about the Cosi. In this class what we discussed is we took lot of examples of the analysis of the Cosi spectrum starting from simple molecule to big molecule. We analyzed I told you how what are the tricks involved 
in the analysis. Start with the confident peak on a diagonal and then go into complete the square, go step by step manner and all the connected partners you have to do. So, each coupled partners is going to give rise to cross peak which are symmetric with respect to diagonal. So, you can identify all the coupled partners and make the assignment very easily. Phenyl group what to do? If you have a sugar group, sugar molecules I told you, you have to always start with anomeric protons which generally comes down field. And if it is alpha and beta, depending upon beta which has axial axial coupling quite larger and alpha is axial equatorial coupling which is much smaller. So, from that you can identify which is whether the isomer is alpha or beta that also I said. In the phenyl group usually identify with you are whether the singlet is there, doublet is there, triplet is there on one of the confident proton of the phenyl group and then make the assignment continue in an easy way. And we also took lot of examples of big big molecules to make the assignment. And of course, cosy as I said, as I said spectra are always recorded in the different modes, magnitude mode, phase sensitive mode etcetera. But always you have to record in the phase sensitive mode and double absorption mode is preferred for better resolution. Magnitude most all those things only in exceptional case where you cannot do phase sensitive otherwise thus it is not done. Usually you have to record the spectrum in double absorption mode to get better resolution. That is what and I showed uh, some variations of the cosy like DQ of cosy. Double quantum co filter cosy gives rise to you know uh, the antiphase character of both doublet and cross peak I mean, sorry, diagonal and cross peaks better resolution peaks near the diagonal are not sub, are not masked get very beautiful clarity is there. And then further we can have a long range cosy or a small flip angle cosy. Small flip angle cosy gives rise to reduce the number of peaks and the tilting of the cross peak gives to relative signs of the coupling if you know a slow uh, direction of tilting of two peaks, two cross peaks relative signs of the coupling you can obtain. And the delayed cosy it gives a also called long range cosy give a delay after the first pulse and after the second pulse. Then long range couplings which are small uh, this thing also get you know evolved that also can be detected gives rise to correlated peaks. So, this has number of such things are there and cosy itself there are hundreds of experiments lot of experiments you can do not hundreds may be a, that is a huge number several experiments like AE cosy, PE cosy, soft cosy you know uh, and uh, uh, small flip angle cosy lot of things are there ok. So, it is uh, not possible to discuss everything, but idea is same each of these developed methodologies are only to improved version to get the better resolution and better way of assigning. Okay, with this I am going to stop from next class we will start with a different experiment called Topsy. Thank you very much.